morning, I want to minister on memories. And we're going to look in Psalm 119, where the, the word is used over and over and over, the word testimony. And I, as we look in, testimony simply is a verbalization of a memory. And scripture has a lot to say about our memories, the values of them, and even the difficulties of them. Now, what has become a springboard for me to think about this a lot is some things that have happened over the last six months, especially the things that have happened over the last week, and the things that are going to be happening over the next 10 days. It all started in the summer of 1968 that starts this whole thing rolling that I'm dealing with right now. I had attended East Tennessee State University as a music major my freshman year in college. I was running from the call of God, struggling with everything I could to become a school teacher, a band director. But in the August, of 1968, I made the mistake of going over to a camp meeting in the area over where the natural tunnel is in that area, and I went to check out the girls. <laughs> My friend Johnny Graybill and I rode motorcycles over there with our sole intent of seeing if we could find a free. the Holy Spirit of God came into a Friday night service. Not only did I refresh my spirit and my soul and my relationship with God, but I knew as I stood up from an altar and proclaimed immediately to those around me, God has called me to preach to share his word and song. At that point, that was the whole concept of my life was in song, especially. I talked to the preacher, asking how I could get into Bible school. Don't take me away. He said, it's probably too late, but I'll do what I can. He made a phone call to Springfield, Missouri, USA. Are you turning me down or up, or is it just going away? It's, it's on its own. I can, I can do whatever, but it's on its own. Just give me just a little bit more. I don't you know. Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I will make this quick. But except I, I left my watch on the, on the, the old time. <laughs> so it's 10 to 11. You're good. <laughs> The reason I didn't change it is because Tuesday I'm going on Central Time and it'll be right for a whole week, so I just left it there. But uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he pulls some strings. And a cousin of mine, Debbie, from the Bluefield area, we were raised together very close, like brother and sister. I didn't know until the next week was going to the same school that fall for the first time. And so my parents and her parents got together, and I know more for probably Debbie's parents' comfort than for mine, but even so, probably a little bit for mine. Debbie and I got on a Greyhound bus downtown Bristol there on 6th Street, is it, I think? And headed over 24, 25 hours straight to the middle of our nation, Springfield, Missouri, USA. go to school. Within a matter of just a few days, and you can cut me down this time. It's, <laughs> wow. And he's not doing it. I'm watching him. So let, let's go to the pulpit, Mike. Graham. Within a few days, I found myself involved in music ministry. part of a choir called the Revival Time Choir, and there met 
contacts and very, very dear friends, found that I had been assigned a roommate who was also a music major from the eastern part of Virginia. I did think he was a little strange, but I liked him. So I introduced him to my cousin, who had rode with me. They had just celebrated their 42nd anniversary. And to make a lot of the next two years uh, really short here, in the, spring, in the fall of the next year at church, a man in the church had just come home from being the piano player for the Black Proposals Quartet. And he had come home to go back into business. He had had all the road he wanted. And he was in our church. And he made mention he'd like to find some boys that'd like to sing some music. And he wanted to keep playing for some, just a quartet in the church. And we formed a little group for whatever reason. It was called the Master's Quartet with David West. And we had a blast singing. It was a lot of fun. But I, I had some other things that were a little more important. I had just gotten married. And in January of that year, Evelyn and I left for ministry. Took our first ministry position in Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, this group continued for three years until all had graduated from college, changing some personalities as time went on. Now, 40 to 43 years later, I get a call from Chicago. At first, I didn't even recognize who it was. Finally, it cleared in my mind. It was Tim Thomas, who is a home missionary in the inner city of Chicago. He's founded seven churches there, has had a tremendous ministry, and is now serving home missionaries all over the nation as a pastoral care pastor and is doing great work for the Lord. He said, Herb, I'm going to ask you something that you just won't believe. He said, how about coming to sing with the Master's Quartet? I said, Tim, I don't want to move. I don't want to be in a quartet. I'm too old, come too far to look back. That's why it's a gospel song, by the way. He said, no, 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 no. He said, through some connections, by and large, Facebook, he said, I'm reconnected with all the guys that were in the Master's Quartet, and we want to get together for a reunion, and we want you to come and sing Lee for our reunion. We're going to spend a week together. We're going to rehearse basically the same songs we sung 40 some years ago. We're just for the fun of it, going to record a few of them just for each other. And we're going to have services on March the 25th in Des Moines, Iowa. Two churches there who we're involved with and have known. They want us to sing for them. It may be the only time we ever do it. We just would like to do it. Would you come and be with us? I hesitated about three seconds and said, I'd love to. We've been visiting on the phone, conference calls and so forth for over six months in preparation. And I fly out of here on Tuesday afternoon to go to Chicago. There we'll get in a church van and drive down to Des Moines, Iowa start rehearsals this coming Thursday for services next Sunday. Uh, just as a part of the announcement, you will have the opportunity to be in next Sunday night service. You don't have to drive to the one I want to do. It. That service is going to be live streamed on the internet. We have the capability right here to bring that into this sanctuary and so on that screen, you're going to get to join me next Sunday night for the Sunday night reunion service of the Master's Quartet. I'm just tickled about that, that you'll be able to do that. Of course, the biggest concern, 
at this point and working toward this has been my voice as I have been suffering with bronchitis for over seven weeks. But the Lord is helping me. Those of you who have been listening to me for a few weeks can tell my voice is a lot clearer this morning. And I've not been singing on purpose. I, I'm just trusting and depending on the Lord and my wonderful doctor to uh, have me ready for the middle of this week. On top of that, the latter part of last week, we got a call, Evelyn did, and Calvin and Debbie, remember Calvin and Debbie? My roommate, I introduced to my cousin, were in the area and wanted to have supper with us. And Thursday night we met them in Lebanon and had a delightful time. Of course, what we dealt with was memories. We sang for their wedding. He was a weird roommate. Scratched his foot with a hairbrush every night when I was trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Things like that. And we, we relived some of those things. And then caught up on our ministries. And a lot of the things that's happened in our life, they didn't even know what happened. They'd spent most of their life on the West Coast. They're both professors. He is now the provost at King's College in New York City. He teaches every day in the Empire State Building. King's College doesn't even have a campus. They have two floors of the Empire State Building, which is their campus. It's owned by the Campus Crusade for Christ. And it's a great university of preparation for ministry. And I, we had a, a wonderful time. So needless to say, my mind has been taken a lot with memories. And I could bore you for another hour which is some of the conversations and things that we have talked about over these last six months. But what good is it to have memories? You know, one of the things I thought about this week, I, I, I really, and, and my dad, as most of you know, is dealing with health problems, and mom has been very sick, and, and, but I know in dad's emotion, he's having this real battle about being 80, three years old. He, he really feels like he's 43, wants to be 23, but he's not. And we struggle, and, and there's times I want to be 23. Most of the time, not. But there are times. But there's one thing we who, that have age have that you youngins don't have. At least not as much as we do. Memories. You're building them. And even before I get into the word, let me just caution you. Build the memories that you want to remember. Don't build memories of regret. So many of the choices that you will make right now in your life will be the memories. Either you will want to tell your grandchildren or you won't want to remember. Many times the choices are yours. What value can members have? Let me look just real quickly in Psalm 119 and refer to a few things with you. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. Your testimonies are wonderful. Because of this, my soul keeps them. Now, <coughs> the word keeps there is just retains and treasures. Testimonies, again, are the verbalization of memories. And so the first thing I want to tell you this morning is memories are treasures. They're precious treasures that are yours. They are, now you share memories with those around you, but you have a set of memories that nobody else 